welcome viewers to uh, the uh, book review segment of the show and this month I'd like to welcome Jamie O'Keefe, welcome Jamie hey, Bob. and we're going to talk about some of the books he's been responsible for which have really proved to be quite revolutionary and I think they've ruffled a few feathers, would I be right there Jamie? Yeah, I certainly have, yeah. I mean they've upset some people, some people have liked them and some people have been anti the books because they speak the truth Yeah, and not everybody likes the truth. Well, the, be the first book I ever read of yours, and we'll, we'll take them in order, was Dogs Don't Do Kung Fu. And I got it straight away. That's because they bite, isn't it? That is right, yeah. <laughs> but I mean, has, has anybody ever come up to you and sort of said to you, what do you mean by Dogs Don't Do Kung Fu, Jamie? What does it mean? Um, yeah, I mean, I've had sort of like mixed, mixed reactions to the title. Um, I did actually have one person think Dogs was referring to girls. Yes. Because it's a female self-protection book, so Dogs being females don't do Kung Fu, so females or dogs don't do Kung Fu, They're which is not, yeah, but the thing is I spent two years writing it, <laughs> I spent two years writing a book for females, two years of my life writing a book for females, Yeah. You know, so it's not um, anti-female, it's pro-female, yes. so dogs don't do Kung Fu, the title actually comes from dogs actually biting, you know, which is the dogs don't do martial arts, yet dogs are kind of the weapon that we have, or the deterrent we have to stop people breaking in the houses to protect us. You know, like myself, I've got an Alsatian. You know, um, elderly people get them as companions, but they are like most of them are guard dogs. And the only reason people are scared of the dogs is because they bite, that's what they can do. Yeah. So it's the teeth, it's the edge weapons, and that's all they're frightened of. You, you mentioned something earlier about your Alsatian dog when you were doing something with a knife with a knife. Oh yeah, the, yeah what we do is, um, with, our, like with my knife training, um, you know, when you actually do knife training in a dojo, in a club, you, know, you say to a guy like, stab me here, and they're not really going to stab you. It not just normally, have... even a no. real knife, is it? No, no, it's like a rubber knife or a piece of wood, yeah. you know, or um, a banana or something like yeah. that. But it's, it's never anything real. You can never get near the real situation. So you're going to do some deflection or grabbing technique or jump out of the way or do a spinning you know, left eyelid strike, something like that. Now, the way I do it, I've got an Alsatian that's pretty aggressive. Now, he's got lots of knives in there, with lots of edge weapons. And he actually attacks me. We play fighting, but what I do is I play fighting. You know, and I try and hold him and deter him from actually attacking me and biting me. You know, and I end up with bites and cuts and tears. But that's what would happen in a knife fight. You know, it is. That's nearer to reality than fighting yeah, somebody. They're not orthodox, aren't they? Don't yeah. they come as you want them to come. No, they don't know anything. That's yeah. it. They don't know anything, but they can fight. Exactly. They don't know the kung fu. Do you, do you see like what martial arts does? And uh, I might be, you know, I'm saying on the same subject. I'm sure is it makes people conform to a certain way of fighting and when they get up against a scrapper, an unorthodox fighter, everything they've learned doesn't work because it's not geared toward coping with this guy who's, for instance, grabbing your leg at the same time as punching you in the head. They more uh, apply, they can apply the martial arts to, for instance, this, but if somebody's to grab hold and punch them in the head or try and lock them up or bite them, there's nothing to defend. No, I mean, I, well, I, I mean, when I was a kid, when I was sort of like 15 first, like doing, doing karate, um, I was trained in a way, like everyone is in karate, to de defend or block against a particular punch or somebody yes. attacking in a particular way. And it would be a block such as this? Or yeah, with you, key or something like that. Yeah, but nobody actually attacks you like that in real life. You know? And in real life, you don't block any punch, it hits you. You know, you, you, yeah. you block it with your head sometimes. Yeah, you block it with your head, yeah. But, you know, you, you, you can't block punches in real world, no. you can't. You know, I know we can stand and you can say, well, I can block it and I'll throw you a punch. You can parry. You, you yeah. might parry or deflect. Yeah, but it's more like you'll be parrying at your teeth. Yeah, you know, that's it's, true. It is. You're biting your fist. Yeah. I mean, the thing is, when we've done our groundwork in, in the clubs and nightclubs and pubs, yeah, not so much in dojos, we've done that as well. You know, I've had like 24 years in martial arts. Yeah. But, you know, I found reality on the door. Same as like Jeff Thompson has. Yeah. You know, I worked at clubs in, in Soho and East London and some of the real bad places where there's bad people. Well, this is what's taking it on to your book, Old School, New School, where you actually, it's, a it's more of a bouncer's guide to security work. Uh, I mean, I know a lot of bouncers and they go on special courses to learn <laughs> how to be yeah. dormant, but you told me earlier that it's all in here. Well, yeah, I mean, I mean the thing is now you, you do a dormant's course, which will cost you like £120. You've got a two-day course, you're given some information, and you tick the white boxes at the end of it and you're dormant. So in theory, like a 16 year old could do a two day course and be looking after us in nightclubs. That's true. So, you know, I'm coming to glass you in a nightclub, stick a glass in your face, and there's a 16 year old there to separate us two. You know, how safe would you feel? Well, he paid his 120 quid, he's got his certificate. Yeah, but it's not know, worth a toss. I've got it? faith in the guy. 
Yeah. But, but also, I mean, but, oh, right, there's, there's guys there, I mean, like myself, I, I was forced to go and do the badge scheme because yeah. even the old school building had to go and do it. Uh, it's, a good, it's a good scheme because it gets rid of the real villains from the door, mm. you know, but only from the front line of the door, it's still working behind the scenes. And um, it stops a lot of the drug profiting that goes on. Yeah. There's quite a lot of doors on in the door. There is, and this book really sort of like exposes it because I'm, you know, I'm sorry any drugs and always have been, you know, yeah. and... You know, they did upset a lot of Dorman when I released this. I've had, I've had lots of lots of trouble with Dorman. You know, real, real big what, trouble. What sort of response have you had uh, from martial artists about the book? Old school, new school? Um, it's been pretty positive. Uh, all, the, all the people that work with Dorman, that have bought the book, they've liked it, they thought it was excellent, because the information is there for like 13 quid. You know, they, they're going to get much more than what they're going to get on a two-day course. Mm. And it's a valuable um, information book. You know, everything's there to refer to. It's you know, a complete guide. I mean, yeah. I found it very edifying because there's stats in there which I hadn't even, not even thought about, never mind studied. And it, it opens an whole new world. And I think even if you're not a doorman, to be quite honest, just reading this book, it, it heightens your awareness. Definitely. I mean, this, this one is different. This is trying to tell people what they should be doing as a doorman. It's not about going out there and like, um, beating the crap out of a couple of teenagers that have spilled a pint of beer. Do you find you get a lot of bullies out on the door sometimes? Absolutely, yeah. yeah. In fact, there's, there's more bullies than anything else. I did test bullies, you know, yeah. I really do. And I found more on the door. But then again, I found it also in the martial arts. You find it, yeah. You know, uh, you know um, karate, you know, in the early days of karate, I found loads of bullies, you know. You get bullies everywhere. Yeah. But um, on the door, they've, they've got the opportunity to be a bully because they're in charge. You've got someone who's done maybe a two-day course, and they're in charge of like 300, 500 people. That's true. Now, yeah. if, a, if a fire the goes power off, can go to the red. Well, know. yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, you know, not all doormen like. I mean, some, you know, some doormen are really, really good. They are good doormen, and there are some good doormen are good martial arts as well. But it's a rare combination. Yeah. You know, being a martial artist doesn't make you doormen. Yes, I was going to mention that. I mean, you find a lot of martial artists uh, they might not be able to make as much money teaching, or sometimes we've got to do that little bit, little bit more to earn a living, for instance, you could have a few things on the body, you might be teaching a karate club one night, on the door the next night. Do you feel that they don't exactly uh, fit in on the door? I mean, you know, do, it, what they train in the gym, does it, uh, you know, relate to what happens on the door, for instance? Um, in most in most places it doesn't, unless they specifically train for the type of confrontation you get on the door. Yeah. I mean, with the type of training that you feel with, you know, our labs doing today, they're doormen. And they train for the top of the text happen. They don't train for the sport arena, and they don't train for um, the ple just the pleasure side of it. You know, because there's nothing wrong with training in martial arts and pleasure. No, and that's fine. Just for but, that's it. but yeah, I was right, sake, Yeah, but uh, it may not necessarily save your life. No. You know, you've only got one life, mm. and it's the one life you've got to protect. If you get it wrong, you lose it. Well, I noticed watching your guys train today. You do a lot of, uh, let's say, for instance, there's no dropping back into stance. You know, it's, yeah. uh, it's not coming from there, it's more or less straight fire stuff, lots of low kicking, lots of instant locking, etc. Yeah. Uh, do, do you feel it's the simple stuff that really works? Or is it really that simple? Well, yeah, the thing is, dropping back into stance it is really, you know, that's, that's like a safety shit. That's like saying, like, you know, I do martial arts, you know, yeah. pull out your license yeah. and say, like, you know, warning. It doesn't work. Mm -hmm. You know, a, a lot of people now couldn't care less whether you do martial arts or not, they'll just bang you out. They don't care. You know? Um, dropping into a stance doesn't do anything at all. Mm. You know, maybe maybe one in a hundred times it may stop somebody attacking him, but you know, if you've got a drunk, he doesn't care whether you drop into stance or not, he's going to beat your brains out. He won't even see you drop into stance. He won't see it, no. He won't see it. <laughs> Just good for the visible mass, won't it? And, what, and why do you drop into stance? Why? Um, you're already in a stance. Exactly. You're already the in a stance. Stance is there, isn't it? Yeah. Stance. You maybe take your lead foot back. Yeah. You've got it, haven't you? Yeah. Well, I've made my mind up about your books, Jamie, and I think they're brilliant, as I've said before. If anybody's interested in getting one of Jamie's books, uh, they can write to New Breed Publishing, P.O. Box 511, Dagenham, Essex, and that's RN8, 3NN. Thank okay. you, Jamie. Well, can I just, just add to that before we finish that yeah. I'm actually publishing other people's books now, so if anybody wants to put a book out, um, the quality of these books, just they give me a call. Yeah, on that write to that address, give me a call, phone me at the office. Okay. Yeah, well, the actual address will be shown after the programme, so get your pens and paper out. Lovely. Thank Thanks you. Thanks a lot. Cheers, Bob.